best place, place to start. I mean, look, obviously, thank you so much for joining us. I think as as me and Adam called this, it was our our running with the mules pre Dream Force special um, of getting such a group of people in a room together um, to talk about what what's coming up. And and I feel like a couple of you guys just said sneaking up on us quite quickly and and coming out of nowhere. Um, I don't really think we many people need to, but but just in case, if we just want to go around and obviously, I guess, introduce maybe who we are and, and maybe the reason why we're here, where we've come from a little bit about our, our background and what we're doing, um, you know, from from my side, everything we do as a business, that we are a recruitment company, we are a staffing agency, but we've always been community led. And that's where, from my side, the, the community leads, side, the Mulesoft mentor, the uh, you know, the Running With The Mules podcast that me and Adam are running now, we, we've just found just being embedded within that space, within the community, we, we know there's something that needs growing here. We need to bring more people into it. We need to show people what's out there. Um, and that's and the best way to do it is to bring people into these sort of environments, to put that out, know that it's it's open for, for all and people can ask questions and find out what they don't know. And the community is the best way of doing that. Um I know, um, I know Adam, Adam, you're sort of next to me on my screen. I don't know if you want to go next. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so I think I've, I've met most of you guys, but the rest of you I'll meet in a couple of weeks, I'm sure, <laughs> at, at Dreamforce. Um, Adam McGuire-Wilson. Um, I worked at big, large SI um, consultancies, and then I moved on to boutique consultancies. Um, Mulesoft certified architect, developer, designer, instructor at one stage as well. Um, I've been through been through it all. Um, currently taking a, a bit of a, an employment break, um, so I'm now back at university doing research into AI ethics and governance of all things. So Dreamforce this year is is particularly apt, um, and yeah, very excited to to get in depth into into this conversation with you guys as well. Great, great. Um, if we just go around for a nice hope from our end, Jim, it's 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 you next to me next. Sure, uh, Jim Andrews. Uh, I am a lead architect at uh, Slalom, and um, I uh, have been a consultant all my life, doing uh, integration for the past twenty—I don't even remember how many years—but uh, a, a lot of different, a lot of different technologies and tools and and platforms I've come across and and worked uh, worked with and uh, MuleSoft for the past five or six years and. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the same thing you just mentioned, Jonathan, about community. I think that's one of the things that's, you know, besides the, you know, the 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 greatness of the platform itself, I think it's the the people uh, kind of in, in this developer community that I I think I like the most. Um, so um, that's a little bit about me. I oh I I'm from Houston, um, um, just outside of Houston, a little town called Sugarland. Great, great, thanks, Jim, Ryan. Yeah, mind. Sure. Hi, I'm Ryan Haig. I've been involved in the MuleSoft community since there was one, I feel like. <laughs> Maybe not the open source community with Ross. I didn't do any coding with him. But uh, yeah, I, I was, uh, I've, I've just gotten really into it this year again, after a few years off. And it's nice to be back. You know, integration is about connecting things together and making them communicate. And so is our community. So I think it's, I think something like this is really, uh, it, it it really it 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 makes all of us uh, better at connecting our systems together. And I you know MuleSoft is the best. I have to say I think it's the best tool in the market right now. I'm willing to be persuaded, but I haven't seen anything better <laughs> in ten years. So um, I'm I'm the company I'm with is called Integration Quest, and we do uh, we do education around integration. And uh, a lot of we're trying to be involved in the community as well as I am. So you know personal and professional. Um, and this will be my first Dreamforce. So I've I, I've been to MuleSoft Connect a couple of times uh, before it was part of Salesforce, and I can't wait to see what it what's different. Um, so uh, maybe maybe that I can't wait to find out more from you guys. You experienced Dreamforce veterans, what to expect? Great, thank you, Ryan. Edgar. Hey everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, yeah. So my name is Edgar Moran. Uh, I'm a software engineer currently working at Cisco Meraki, and uh, it's part of the Cisco Systems uh, company. Uh, I've been working with Mulesa for around five years now, uh, and priorly I was uh, doing software development for almost ten or more. So uh, I have pretty good experience in kind of both of the technologies right now. And then when Salesforce 
uh, acquire millions of them, everything just made sense. So yeah, I'm still doing a lot of uh, both words. So, um, but mostly uh, millions of now. So I, I really love the platform and everything. I became millions of ambassador a couple years ago, almost three, I guess. Uh, and really pretty excited always to, to, to see how the community has been growing every time we go to an event, we, we met new folks. Uh, we used to see them in the, in, in, you know, in the screen almost all the time, right? Virtually. And, and whenever we gather together and we see each other, it's like a, that weird feeling, right? Like, oh, wow, it's you, right? I can see, I, I see you in person. So that's great. So that's what I'm looking forward now uh, on the Dreamforce because I know I'll, I'll meet a lot of more people. And, and yeah, really glad to be part of, of, of this uh, cohort always. So uh, always just meeting with uh, great people. So thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Edgar. Barnes, if you don't mind. Hey, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Barnes Marshall, uh, live in uh, Tampa, Florida. Um, uh, principal architect and owner of uh, Innovation Solves. Um, MuleSoft mentor, uh, meetup leader here in Tampa Bay, uh, and active in the community. No, no, most of you folks have met most of you in person. For those I haven't, looking forward to meeting you. This is also my first Dreamforce, never been to one. So I've uh, been to several other things, but uh, really looking forward to this and uh, looking forward to connecting with everyone. Fantastic, fantastic. Miguel? Hey everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Well, Miguel Martinez, I'm one of the MuleSoft ambassadors. I started with MuleSoft in 2015 as a customer. Actually, I was evaluating different integration platforms for my team. And uh, I just fell in love with MuleSoft at the time. I was a bit, a bit reluctant at the beginning, but given all the constraints and all the challenges that we have in the integration world, I decided MuleSoft was the best choice at the time. And it didn't disappoint me. Uh, as uh, you see, since 2015, uh, the platform has evolved tremendously. Um, I became a MuleSoft leader in Dallas, Texas. Then I was invited to become one of the MuleSoft ambassadors, where I've met uh, many of you in person. I've met people actually in their own country, in Sweden, even in Romania, in Mexico, Colombia, so in many states of the United States. Uh, uh, last time I was in New York, I, I met with Edgar. And, uh, you know, the community is amazing. It's very powerful. Uh, it has a lot of knowledge. And, uh, you know, we're always ready to help each other. So I love that. Uh, currently, uh, well, I've been working with um, what assigned to projects with MuleSoft Professional Services. And I'm currently leading the practice, uh, the Latin American practice at Five Dimensions uh, with a, a MuleSoft Professional service, uh, Services provider and partner. Great, fantastic. So, and uh, uh, thanks for inviting me, man. Thanks. I appreciate that, Miguel. And by no means least, Nisha. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Nisha Sharma. I am a managing director at Accenture and I lead our MuleSoft practice here globally. Um, I also lead our Tableau practice. So it is a nice um, opportunity to really see how we're bringing the products together, how Salesforce is bringing the products together, and how it ultimately all these products are tying into their broader. Uh, Salesforce plans and roadmaps and, and so on. So um, I'm based out of Miami, Florida. I have been in my role of MuleSoft lead now for about three years. Uh, I have a slightly different background from some of you in that I was I was uh, working on another partnership and then I was asked, hey, you want to, you know, we need someone to to drive our MuleSoft business here and, you know, can you do it? So I'm like, okay, fine, right? And uh, so uh, it really was an opportunity for me to learn uh, more about MuleSoft. I knew, obviously, I was involved in the integration space, but hadn't just used MuleSoft myself. Uh, so, you know, really got to, to learn it. Um, and, uh, and, and as I started, one of the initiatives I started was Women Who Mule. So we talk about the community. Uh, I was looking at where the women, how do we bring the women together? How do we, how do we grow more women in, uh, in this space? And so we started Women Who Mule. And uh, last year was my first dream force. And uh, it was also where I received a golden hoodie for Women Who Mule, second to Miguel, who received it earlier in the year. Uh, and um, yeah, so it's, it's been fantastic. And I really, really have enjoyed working with the, within the community, uh, right? Like we say, it, it transcends all of our organizations. Doesn't matter where we're from, but as a community, 
I think we really, you know, we, we just really work nicely together and are, are all here to try to just grow the mule style, uh, the mule style practice and, and capabilities. Right. So, um, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a wonderful journey. Fantastic. 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 And it's, it's going to carry on. Right. And, and I think, you know, I think, well, who, who to, to talk first, because, you know, su such a wealth, I would say, of, of, of experience and, and knowledge, et cetera, in this room. And, you know, almost surprising that, that a couple of you will be at your first dream forces. Um, but, you know, to, to the open floor, I mean, what, what are we most excited about seeing this time around? I know we, we all know the hot topic is going to be around around AI and, and MuleSoft and AI and, well, AI, everything into Salesforce, really. You know, what are we most excited about seeing in a few weeks? All right. Well, I, I can say something pretty quick. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, everything. Uh, Sounds like uh, AI is just the main topic, right? Like uh, all go through uh, marketing and you know, on the Salesforce side, it's just really pushing on the AI thing right now. And I think it's going to make sense. But uh, what I expected to see, and I think uh, I'm getting excited, but I don't know even if it's going to happen, is just meals of on the AI space, right? We we hear uh, about uh, Einstein, AI overall, just Salesforce, right? But we haven't heard much about meals of itself. So I think... Um, and I would like to see more like uh, something happening on the AI space, like maybe uh, AI code builder, maybe ha having some uh, features there, uh, any point platform of it all, right? Like and now being able to do X and Y, right? But uh, using AI, uh, that would be interesting, uh, even though I feel like uh, still uh, a little bit in diapers, all the AI think, and also a little bit of uh, need governance too, right? Like uh, right now we are just, uh, opening the door, but then people is just getting too excited that sometimes we can uh, tend to lose control. So uh, that might be something to talk to uh, at that point. But uh, uh, really excited to to see if we also get some um, you know attention in that space and, and just talking about all these things uh, that will be interesting to see and and talk. I, I think on, on that note, it's going to be very interesting to see some of the the case studies and some of the the user stories. You know, the the, the where, where customers are actually using this already because there are so many different AI tools on the market now. And again, we all know MuleSoft is the glue that, that pulls these platforms together. Um, so I imagine that a lot of them are, are leveraging MuleSoft as that integration space to, to you know leverage the APIs. I know um, OpenAI for ChatGPT, there's an AI, uh, API already for it. I think someone built a Mule connector for it already. Was that? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that was somebody out of the community too. Yeah. <laughs> So someone with a, a weekend free and decided to, to right. go and push the limits. Um, but it's going to be very exciting to, to see these stories and see how it is all coming together. Because, you know, like you said, Edgar, it's moving so fast at the minute. Um, and it is, it's a bit of a, a buzzword at, at times and people don't really understand what what's being done. Um, so to see how the customers are actually leveraging it, I think that's what I'm, I'm most excited about. Yeah, that's kind of interesting because um, even through my Mules of Professional Services engagement, we continue to encounter customers that are still trying to solve ultra basic integration problems and are still trying to run on legacy uh, architectures and are not ready to evolve. So um, I, I wonder like what's the path, what's the strategy to start implementing these more advanced tools and advanced concepts. Like many of them, they're still asking for batch processes. Many, just a few are, yeah, just a few are getting it, like the power of reusability through API consumption, right? So I think uh, there has to be uh, more than the hype. Uh, we need to come up with uh, strategies on how to educate the, the, the organizations right, for free. This has to be done for free because uh, there is no other way. I mean, you see the Mulesoft community, like uh, like you, you attend the meetups and you learn so many things on new process, new tools. For example, RPA, um, this time I'm skipping uh, Dreamforce, but if I were there, I would probably corner the team that is working on RPA and I start asking more difficult questions around the implementation about the maturity of the tool, about like uh, real life use cases, right? 
understand uh, we have many new products, uh, but we need to make sure that those products are actually aligned with the demands of the enterprises, not, not just uh, little projects of little companies, but you know, live up to the expectations and the legacy that is being uh, built by the, but actually by, by the Mule runtime. I mean, yeah, like, like Ryan just said, it's the best integration platform, the best integration tool on the market, but now we're getting new products, you know? So these new products, I think the biggest challenge is live, to, uh, live up to the same expectations of the, of the core of the platform, right? So, yeah. Do you, do you think? Do you think as well, like we've we've said, like you say, say in there, um, Miguel, and it, it, you sort of touched it as well. You know, pre Dreamforce, so when a lot of, and I guess, I guess, especially you guys come, you know, from consulting backgrounds, do you find that a lot of MuleSoft customers, especially you know, or Salesforce customers in general, go into Salesforce and? You know, learn things that they could have been doing for however long before, but but didn't know the opportunity was there for them to do that. Like I say, they see these customer case studies or they see these things that are that are presented at, at these events, and they think, well, hang on, we could have been doing that for the last however long, but they didn't know it was an option. They'd never explored it. They'd never seen it, and and it sort of just opens their eyes to it a bit more. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. There are so many sessions around different things and different perspectives that you see. Even myself, I go like, "Oh, I never seen this before." Like that was a very interesting way of solving this problem, right? Or it makes you think. I say, "Oh, I knew another way, but this way is very interesting, right?" So, and you you see it. how many sessions? Like over thousand five hundred sessions. I don't know. So yeah, I I, I really encourage uh, like anyone who is attending Salesforce, especially customers to go and, and find use cases related to your industry. It will open your eyes. I think this really <laughs> helps close. Sorry, I was just going to say, I think this really helps close the maturity gap as well, because as you touched on, Miguel, you know, we're still seeing some customers coming in with batch processes and things, whereas mm -hmm. other ones, you know, they're crawling along on their integration journey while we have others who are trying to fly. And I think, you know, like you said, it, it's Dreamforce. It's the, the community events that actually allows you to go in and open your eyes and see this is how you do it this is the right way to do it this is it's those light bulb moments where you're just like whoa would never have thought of that but that that's that's so much better um i think we've probably all been there at some stage in our career <laughs> sorry nisha i cut you off there no 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 not at all um i, I was just gonna say i mean i, I you know I agree definitely the, the the talk is all gonna be about data and ai this time right and and there's been so much excitement so much buzz around Gen AI and what are the use cases and how is it going to change our world and our business and, and so many things. But what we're really getting at now is what does it actually take to do that stuff, right? I mean, and, and that really comes down to this foundation that you have to have, which includes MuleSoft, right? How, what is, how are you going to integrate? How are you going to connect? What are all the data sources? You know, like just, just looking at that core foundation and now it's starting to get real, right? It's like, okay, now what, right? And so, and, and I totally agree. I think um, with, with Dreamforce and all, yes, like a thousand sessions there are, but sessions are also tailored to different types of attendees. So you will have very technical sessions for the hardcore developers and architects who really want to get into the, into the details of, of um, you know, the different products and aspects and such. But you'll also have very senior leaders who are there to be able to go and attend executive sessions or tracks where they get to really understand what are others doing? What are our peers doing? What are our competitors doing? What are others in other industries doing, right? So you get a view of what's actually happening out there. And in some cases, you may be a leader, right? Your company may be leading the way. You may be out there presenting on stage about what you've done. But in other cases, you may also be just getting started with your journey and looking for some um, examples, some inspiration, some, you know, just just um, ideas of what others are doing, and then be able to take that back to your own organizations and discuss with your teams or, or, you know, with, uh, with whoever's whoever you're, you're working with there. So it's definitely something for everyone. And uh, I think I think really, this is going to be about, you know, okay, let's, let's get real with uh, what it takes to, to do this stuff.
I, I the, again, back to AI, it's great, but what about the governments and what about trust? And, and there's been such a huge trust issue in this country and in, in so many different things that we won't go into tonight, right? Um, but but all, there's, there's this fundamental trust thing and how can I trust what I'm seeing? And is it, and it you know, and then Nisha, you mentioned, you know, generative AI, you know, is, is that is that all it is, right? Are we only going to be talking about, you know, how to make me a faster developer, right? Because I can go in and I can put in a prompt and I can get a flow that gets created for me, at least that's 90% of the way there. That's, that's like a, to me, that's kind of a small use case. That's like a, that, that's a, that's a tool that I can use and, and, and I'm happy to, uh, to, to enable my developers. Um, half the time though, that I'm trying open AI chat GPT, it's, it, it does not give me a good code base to start with, or, or at least gives me one that I have just as many bugs or, you know, things that I have to like figure out on my own. Right. Um, so I'm really kind of hoping to see what's a broader use case that that's more, um, yeah, that 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 opens the doors of, of integration kind of beyond just the developer and what they're doing with building integration flows. Integration is um, you, you mentioned MuleSauce product sprawl, and I would I think we should directly uh, address that as a group. You know, I I, I have watched MuleSoft go from being uh, on version two a XML driven Java framework. <laughs> until and then it became a flow a graphical and low code flow tool and then it grew up into an api platform and each step along the way there was a method to, to the madness and i see it today with rpa and i see it with experience hub we'll we'll see with some of the other ones but the 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 there the method to the madness really is that that it's it's not it's not extra stuff like en enterprises need connective tissue between their it systems and there's nothing it, if you look at your customers, like what MuleSoft is giving us to, to build the connective tissue out of it, there, it's not like it's competing with something they already have. <laughs> There's a absence of anything there that we could just code it all ourselves out of Java, I guess, or MuleSoft is trying to help, you know, and not just so you build it once and tie stuff together, but you get to leave behind assets that you can build out of again that nobody else could have built because nobody else works at your company. So there may be some opportunity there in the connective tissue, there in the enterprise catalog for AI to offer you. Imagine you're like a giant bank with 1200 APIs and you don't know what they all do. And you're trying to figure out how to tie these two systems together. I could see some kind of a natural language interface to find out what all this junk is we have here so that we can tie our systems to one another. So I think uh, one of the uh, big uh, capabilities of the tool is that it can be extended through the, uh, we can build custom connectors, right? That can easily integrate with new AI capabilities. For example, to do some data quality, data cleansing, right, some observability applications, right, even transformations in a particular industry. But Adam, as you know, like to train these models, you need huge amounts of data, right? That, that's where the, I think uh, your research on governance, it's going to uh, provide a lot of value, right? Because I can imagine like maybe organizations within a certain uh, sector of the industry have to join forces to start sharing certain amounts of data to be able to train these models and benefit all of them. So, you know, that's uh, that's complex, but uh, I hope uh, next time we see you, you can give us some light, uh, you know, on the, what's the progress being made in that sector. I think but yeah, I mean, there's so many applications. You, you really hit the nail on the head there because it is, you know, this is a challenge that even when I was working at big global SIs and boutique consultancies, this is something that we tried to encourage customers to do more was sharing assets and sharing, um, you know, information within the sector. Um, we actually, we tried to do this with, with MuleSoft in the uh, nonprofit sector. And you kind of think nonprofits, they're not competing with each other. You know, these guys, they're, they're not competitors but they still are very, very, very protective of their methods, of their data and things like this. 
Um, and, and you're 100% right, you know, if we want AI to be able to do what we ultimately want it to do in being able to generate the, these flows and, and these data mappings and things like that, it needs the data and one customer isn't enough, you know, one customer isn't going to be able to do this on their own, it's really going to take um, industry industry leaders to go in and, and say, look, we need to work together, this is for the benefit of all of us, uh, but it is going to be a big challenge to get to get them to agree. technology is evolving so rapidly that it's so hard to catch up on all these threats. So you have to maintain a core product that has uh, be, uh, become a leader in the integration space, right? And on top of that, trying to build new products like the Flex Gateway. I mean, I recently made a post on LinkedIn. Actually, Flex Gateway has reached a, a, a really good level of stability for enterprise deployments. It can scale really well as of the last release. The product team did, did an amazing job with that, uh, but it's still evolving when it comes to policies, you know, like custom policies and all this, but, but we're going to get there. We're trending in the right direction. And I mean, it's just a matter of time and resources, allocating the right resources to the products. But yeah, I mean, it's hard to keep up, you know. <laughs> being hard to keep up, you know, that's that's for both sides. You know, every, every business finds it yeah. hard to keep up, right? And, and all across all technologies, um, all the new releases, everything new that's coming in at the moment that people haven't done before, haven't invested in before. And, you know, I think it works works both ways here as well because, you know, businesses are out there now, the customers are going to be there, they're going to be seeing these things and they're going to be thinking, okay, well, we even need to, you know, uh, train our current developers into into these new aspects, into the, these new tools, because that's what we want to pick up. Or we need to go out and hire them. We need to hire people with these skill sets, or we need to bring in an NSI that can deliver these skill sets as well. Um, and I know, um, Nisha, I think it's one of your, your topics you're, you're speaking about. But on the flip side of that, it also is that all the developers, architects, you know, people that are te technical guys that are there, get an insight in what they can do next to further their own career. You know, what route are we going down with this? What are companies going to be picking up? Uh, you know, where do I go and train? Where do I take my development? Where do I take my training? What do I pick up next to make sure I'm at the top of, you know, what a business is looking to do to make sure I'm there? So to me, um, all the AI hype, some of it's hype, some of it's not. Um, I'm more into practical examples, right? And I, I feel like we're all on the front lines, right? And and it's our responsibility to to drink from the fire hose, take take what we really need to latch on to and let the let the rest fly by. But I was thinking a couple of practical examples, right? I've got a got a client with a with many, many customer service representatives and, and they're, they're always bogged down, right? Because uh, each, each uh, customer calling in has a different situation. I was thinking, you know, boy, that would, be a, that would be a potential really good use case for correctly leveraging AI to interact with a customer base, right? To provide that, because when you're on, when you go to a website or even through your phone and you're using the chat app, sometimes you know it's AI, sometimes you know it, it, it might not be. And sometimes it's just hard to tell and I'm not even sure, right? But if you do it right, they won't know, but they'll give you the right answer. And I was thinking that, that's, a, um, that's a really, and that's something practical, right? That's something that we can, that's not hype. That, that's something that we can like actually put to use. And um, another one that, that caught my eye, there was a um, mention of a session on a legacy ESB migration, right? So uh, a lot of clients I go into may have legacy ESB tools. They may have, um, not, not calling TIBCO a legacy tool, but, uh, but we've got other tools in there and the customer makes a decision that they are going to throw everything out and keep MuleSoft, right? And uh, so how do we start that? Sometimes they have large footprints, right? Really large footprints. They're deeply embedded, have deep, deep roots in companies, right? How I was thinking, how can we use AI to tear through what work is being done underneath there and have that? Because 
the first step in really understanding how to migrate that is what is actually being done? Not what does it say it's doing? What is it actually being done? And how can we leverage that? Those were a couple of really practical examples where I think there's there's opportunity there to get our feet wet and uh, and to take like a um, a real world approach to doing something really cool. Yeah. That's absolutely true. So um, yeah, and and I feel you you say something that is uh, that is right. Uh, we we have uh, th that challenge, right? Uh, as front lines, we have to tell people how to use it and, and how to uh, make well use of it too. And, and part of these practical samples are it needs to be just uh, you know. Uh, explain in the way that it solves an actual real problem too because sometimes it's just like a superficial questions that we made to the AI or things or problems that we need to solve that already are solved <laughs> and, and we ask, uh, we're still asking AI for those so so I think the responsibility on our side is just to demonstrate that we can uh, solve some complexity as well and not just for uh, you know light problems but, but for the huge ones because in the end that's what is going to make impact right and if Mills at some point or the platform in the end is just solving some of those issues or is creating tools that allows people to, you know, uh, just make it a right and, and people feel comfortable. And, and as we said, is uh, on the trust of the people is going to work. And I think uh, we, we get a glance on, on New York uh, just recently on, on, on the announcements, right? Like uh, AI coming in, but no, it's not the AI thing coming, but it's also how we, whole Salesforce of it all in all their products that they have are implementing uh, the trust, right? How we know that the AI is actually trustable. And I think that is really important. So so yeah, that, that's really true. Yeah, and you brought a really good point, uh, Barnes, uh, because, that one key thing of what you said is the knowledge of the business, the capabilities and the application of those capabilities. So sometimes that, that part is missing and it's just a generic formula that works for anything that you're trying to implement. You need to have someone that understands the business, that understands the needs and the capabilities of different tools to be able to apply it correctly to a particular use case. So I think this will require a lot of uh, um, what I put on the chat, a lot of investment in training, right? Uh, the companies need to really own their processes because even for simple use cases in the integration space that are really simple, we just have to make decisions based on a couple of pieces of information and the business don't have that information. So the business, the, 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 we, we had to publish like some guidelines and say, okay, businesses, this is your responsibility. You need to understand your processes, what, what you're after, you know, your use cases, and then train the business on the capabilities of the tools, and then also train the technologist on how, the, vice versa, to understand the needs of big businesses so they can correctly implement those capabilities, right? So it sounds simple, but again, it requires a lot of collaboration, a lot of investment, a lot of time, a lot of patience, because, you know, this is not going to uh, um, generate revenues immediately, right? It, it will require some investment and time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we've 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 all seen, right? Especially with Microsoft, it's it's never it's not it's not ever really been you know a, a one size fits all approach. You, you know, not everybody needs to go and build a, a 10, 12, 15 person C4E. You know, some companies still get by with, with one or two people in, in, in position, depending on what they're trying to do. Um, and I think that's where, where they'll see, like, again, those use cases come into effect of, okay, this is what, you know, okay, we know who company they are, this is what they've implemented, this is what they've built, this is exactly what we want to do, actually. Let's go and do that. Um, and I think, you know, we, we've said about it a lot. I know, um, obviously, Edgar, when we were at the, the AI day back in June, you know, all of AI was built with that that labelling of, of trust. Um, and, and I think, I guess the question is, you know, how do, how do companies get that trust in these new platforms or, or what do, do Salesforce need to do to promote that that trust and really show it? I'll take it. I, uh, I, I feel like uh, part of what has, I've always valued about the MuleSoft the technology product in particular is that it's it lends itself to 
the kinds of software work that we've been doing all in in all, for decades in the software industry and we've been evolving and getting better at software development practices like continuous delivery like automated testing like source control um the the we know how to build trustworthy software and the fact that you're using a neural net with a billion parameters scares people and they're not sure they can trust it but you, those people in this room who have been the trusted advisor for customers a long time we already know how complex the systems were before you had neural networks involved in them. And the way you make software trustworthy is you make sure that it does what you tell it to. And you give it a continuous integration pipeline and you run some tests on it. So we already know how to do that, right? I think the way, where we can we can take advantage of, of MuleSoft's, um, MuleSoft's track record of being a platform that supports professional software development practices and use it to test all the other systems. Because guess what? We're in the middle. Right, we're the integration fabric. We're we're touching all the other systems. Why not use our op opportunity to make sure that those systems? For it's going to take us, like Miguel said, it's going to take us using business meaningful measures of trust. It's not just abstract. It's like at this particular company, trustworthy means this particular thing. For example, in healthcare, you're going to have to use HIPAA compliance. In finance, you're going to have to use double entry accounting and some other regulatory compliance, I guess there's a bunch of them, PCI for car credit cards, et cetera. Whatever the measures are in your industry, you be specific and you build reliable processes that catch the system doing the wrong thing and fix it. You make it sound so simple. <laughs> simple and easy. Yeah, and I love that. Right? <laughs> yeah, I love that. Business meaningful measures of trust. I love it. Yeah, well, that's, I, that's, I think that's, also... That's yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead, Nisha. I, I think also, I mean, you know, tr trust trust is built in at all layers of your of your organization, right? And in many of the use cases we're talking about now, it it sometimes comes down to do you trust your data that you already have, right? Like you know, and because I mean, I think I think we all know that there are definitely processes around how you know getting getting your data cleaned up all the data governance right all, all of that there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that has happened on that traditional um you know data management side of the house right and and i think you know now is is I mean, it's not new but but we're dealing with this again of bringing together the the data piece and the integration piece right and and yeah there's there's so much we can do at the integration layers with the integration tools and and those capabilities but it's got to start with your your data. Do you have good, clean, trusted data already? Especially if you're looking to bring data together from sources where you haven't really done that before, right? I mean, even even if it's your own your own organization's data, maybe it's sitting in a different business group or business unit or or something, right? But but now you're interacting with it. Could be dealing with conflicts in, in data. It could be dealing. You know, there's there's just a bunch of things that we've got to we've got to do to be able to trust the data that we have already, right? And then some of it's just kind of going back to some of those basics, which we haven't mm -hmm. done in a long time. Yeah, that's interesting to see if, if Salesforce has uh, some session on that, like data quality, because now we have to see as Salesforce as an integrated ecosystem nowadays, right? Because now you have MuleSoft and then you have the problem of data quality that needs to happen at the source, I would think. There's some data quality that can be done in, in where well, the message is traveling to the integration platform. But the, the main data quality and cleansing, it's, it's happening uh, at, 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 the data, at the data store, right? And that's where there is a huge opportunity for Salesforce to implement AI for data quality, I think. So, well, and, and you're fun. starting to see that in the conversations around data cloud, right? Because, you know, data cloud, is bringing together data from whether it's your sales cloud, marketing cloud, whatever cloud, right? And and you know even just looking at the def definition of a customer, the definition of an organization, you know, like some of these core definitions that each system has. Now you're looking at bringing them all together, and there's a whole bunch of reconciliation that needs to be done. There's a whole bunch, you know. So so these kind these types of conversations are raising those questions and forcing organizations to you know, clean up, uh, right? Or, or at least, at least um, come to an understanding of what's what, right?
So we go back to, I think, what, what we heard previously, Brian, I think like you, you guys touched on there. You know, a lot of this data, or all this data is already there. You know, companies already have this data. They just don't know they have it. And then they start to uncover it. And then, and, you know, and that's where they then question that data. You know, it, it, they've already got it. They've already, it's already been there. And then AI starts to bring that through. And I think, you know, I mean, we say about this will be brand new, but I think even if we go back a few months, Jim, I think me, you and Adam had a, a meetup back in, in sort of March, April time. And we went back there and, you know, a, AI isn't completely new. You know, a, AI isn't completely new. In ter- it, it's been around. It's just, it's never been used and implemented like it's being now. But, you know, it's it's been around. It's been around the block. It's been tried before. It's been used before. And, and I think now... I guess the, the trust value is so because it's going to be so widely used, because it's going to be the main focus of implementation, that's when the trust comes into it. I, I think previously it was maybe brushed aside a little bit. It didn't work how it was meant to work. or So it was never really incorporated. So it never needed to be trusted as much because people weren't invested in using it. Now they are. That's where it is. And now it's kind of uncovering these things that businesses had but didn't know they had. And, you know, I think the question is, well, how how is it doing that? Where's this data been? Why haven't we had this before? How's this finding it? And we haven't been able to. Um, and, and I think, again, I, I think the, the, what the business does or the, the size of the business, I guess, also depends on where their trust level is. You know, um, it's easier for certain businesses to trust or some will know they have to. If others are kind of a bit more sceptical about what they're doing or why they're going down this route, their trust bar is going to be a bit a bit higher. Um, but, but yeah, and, and I think there'll be a number of talks around that. I, I think like we touched on, there'll be a number of talks around the technical side of, of AI and, and how it's actually going to be implemented, how it's going to be built. And then, like we say, above that, the, the talks aimed at other people within the business as to this is why it does it. This is not how it's built, but how it does it. This is why you need it. This is why it's a good thing. You know, this is, you know, I think very separated talks on those sides. Yeah, I, I think my, my biggest concern around, around the trust is, you guys can probably relate to this, you know, the amount of times you walk into a client, a new client, and you say, okay, can I see your integration registry? Can I see what you're integrating at the minute? And they say, what's an integration registry? What, you know, what, what are you talking about? We have data flowing between them. Uh, we don't know what data is going where. We don't know what systems are talking to each other. You know, inherently, the challenge with, with most types of AI is that it is a black box. You know, we don't actually know what's going on inside it. Um, and that it scares me a bit from an integration point of view. You know, if, if, if customers and clients, if they don't know, if they don't have an integration registry at the minute, are they going to have an AI registry? Are they going to understand what, you know, where the different sources of data are coming through, um, what the outputs are going to be? Maybe that's another use case for AI. Maybe, you know, it's going to be able to sit there and look at an estate and put together an integration registry by monitoring um, traffic or by monitoring the different integrations and things. Maybe, maybe there's an advantage there, um, but that's definitely from my a consulting and an integration point of view. That that's where I, I have a, a bit of nervousness at the minute. It is the the black box challenge that that we see. Well, and there's and there's two types of trusts, really, maybe more, but at least the two, right? Is that you know we've talked about do we trust our data? Do we trust the data that we have already? And is it in, in the you know is it good data? Is it clean? You know all that. But then the other side of the trust is who's using my data and how are they using it and what are they using it for, right? Which is now the the other piece that we're really getting to, especially when with all these conversations around Gen AI, uh, machine learning, right? All of this, this side of AI, because Gen AI, like you feed it anything and it'll make sense of it, right? It'll, it'll just incorporate that. So now it's like, well, I don't want you to have my company's data in your LLMs. I don't want you to have my you know, a book that I published in your LLM, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. that trust factor of, you know, um, who, who am I giving my data to? And what are they doing with it? Right? Did I do I give you the permission to do that or not? Right? I mean, it's just kind of like right now, it's just grab whatever you can, right? And, and we'll figure it out. But, but this is where this is where things can start to go wrong. And, and where, um, you know, you, you run into, uh, all sorts of other challenges, which I think we will hear about with, with you know, what um, Salesforce had talked about in terms of the trust that they're putting into, into their Gen AI models, into the LLM, you know, and, and that whole capability that they've introduced there. So we'll start to have more conversations along those lines too. 
And this has massive repercussions because, you know, we've seen with the likes of Twitter already, you know, they're putting up a massive paywall in front of their API. Um, there was a lot of contention a couple of months ago because Reddit said they were going to do the same. And it's specifically to stop, you know, these crawlers going out, taking the data, feeding it into LLMs. But, you know, from, from our side, we've, we you know, I've used Twitter so many times on, on use cases on, you know, hackathons and meetups and things like that because it was a nice one to integrate into. Um, and this is, it's another concern that I see from, from an integration side is, you know, customers becoming more and more protective of their, of their APIs because of the data that they see, you know, we, we've heard so many times that data is like oil, it's like gold, it's, it's a very valuable commodity now. Um, but open APIs were a real advantage for, you know, for consumers, for, for tweakers, for, you know, for just people in the community who wanted to have fun as well. Um, and seeing some of those, um, shut down, it, it's, I hope that it's not the start of a new trend whereby, you know, every API now is going to be closed behind credentials and, and massive fees. Guys, I, I don't want to change the subject too drastically, but I do appreciate in seven minutes, I think Nisha does have to, to jump off and leave us. Um, and I just want to ask you, if, if you don't mind, Nisha, one, one of your talks especially is so community driven, um, all around sort of how people can build their careers. I think it's about sort of women in tech as well, women who mule. Um, I, I just want to give you the chance to obviously talk about that for a second as well before you have to jump off. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, so I've got actually two sessions at Dreamforce. One is uh, our Women Who Mule session, which is around building a career with MuleSoft. And, and really what we're going to have, we're going to have a few women who are going to join me for this discussion and really share how they got involved with MuleSoft. And we're looking to have, um, you know, a developer, so someone who's, you know, in there, right, developing, really getting into, into the code and, and so on. Um, and have an architect, right? How, you know, I think you all have experience of how you all got involved with MuleSoft as an architect, uh, right? But, re but especially in these days, as we see that people are coming from different backgrounds and particularly a Salesforce background with MuleSoft now, right? So, so you know, how does that work together? How, what are the opportunities to, to learn and to grow with MuleSoft? Um, and then a product manager from MuleSoft is going to share uh, her her um, journey and experiences as well. So hopefully just be able to share that, you know, you can get involved. Anyone can get involved. I mean, if someone like me can get involved in MuleSoft, then anyone can get involved in MuleSoft. So, um, you know, I, I think it's just meant to uh, to encourage people to uh, to take a look and, and get involved. And then um, my second session is around hyper automation. And uh, so again, just like we talked about here, you know, it, it is going to be talking about, yes, there are all these trends uh, in this in this space of hyper automation or the, the buzzword of hyper automation. But what does that really mean? Uh, what are what are we seeing organizations are actually doing in in this area? Um, but again, what does it take to actually make that happen? And how do you prepare? your organization to to be able to take advantage of those technologies uh right and um yeah so we'll, we'll be chatting a little bit about that obviously whilst we're on the subject jim you mentioned you're you're obviously speaking as well yeah i'm gonna be on thursday at two o'clock so after everybody's like completely wiped out they're worn out they're tired they've already seen food fighters they're they're fighting the Foo Fighter hangover and all of that stuff, right? They're going to, you know, it's after lunch, their eyes are glazing over and I'm going to present uh, or I'm, I'm going to sit in on a panel uh, and we're going to discuss uh, the new IDE, uh, which is any point code builder. Um, as many of you guys know, it's, it's now out on desktop, which I'm really excited about. Uh, you know, when, when I was on the panel last year, um, the only thing that we had was was web uh, web IDE, which I I big fan, especially recently when I ran into a client who can't figure out how to get developer machines to developers. Really would have been handy to have a web IDE that you could use. Uh, so I like that. The problem is every time the internet flickers, you're you're toast, right? Like so, it, it you you I, it was it was really causing some issues around that. So anyway, they. They just released the extension pack for Visual Studio Code. And uh, so now you can get it uh, on your desktop for Mac. And that's going to be the first thing to go GA. And so um, in this discussion on Thursday, 
uh, we're gonna we've got a panel um, including Andrew Comstock, the product manager, and a another uh, there's gonna be a client on the uh, panel. I mean, a, a MuleSoft customer and uh, and myself representing kind of more of an SI. And we're going to talk about all the cool things coming and uh, it's going to take some time, guys. I mean, it's not, you know, it's you're replacing a product that Miguel and I and everybody and all of you guys have been using for years and we're so comfortable with it. And we know all the shortcuts and we can do all of this groovy, cool stuff. And and it, it's going to take some time, but it's built it's being built on a really cool platform. And I really like kind of the the attention to detail that the the product team is is giving it and uh you know and i think it will be able to benefit from some of the ai stuff that's uh that's coming around as well with the generative AI, ai stuff so that's my session two o'clock uh um on uh acb so uh I have a couple of sessions. So the first one is a AI one, talking about the risk of using AI on company. So that's why I talk about governance stuff. It'll be five minutes or something like that. So I'll just be, uh, you know, speaking on behalf of uh, Meraki, uh, Cisco Meraki, basically. And my second session, it'll be, it's going to be on Wednesday, 4 p.m. So I, I guess it's also <laughs> not attracting too much attention. And also the topic is kind of different. So uh, it's more technical stuff going uh, using a kind of uh, WhatsApp bot, not bot, but uh, it's just a, a support channel for uh, where you can start a conversation in live agent in Salesforce. So I already made a POC where you can keep the conversation between WhatsApp and live agent. Uh, I, I think it's pretty cool and, and it might be interesting for some marketing folks. So uh, yeah, it, it seems like it's just going to be interesting. Just try not to touch AI much there. So uh, just trying to make something different. <laughs> I, I think that's going to be the interesting thing, right? Because, you know, I think there's still going to be so much that so many customers and new customers that could learn during Dreamforce that isn't necessarily AI related, right? And, exactly. and, you know, customers that are coming that are still building other things, you know, that then maybe they're at the start of their journey or they're, they're not at the point where, yes, we need to go and put AI into everything. There's so many other things they can build that, that they're going to be able to find out about from, from some of these some of these talks. Exactly. And the nice thing, I guess, is just to showing that they don't need to pay for a pretty fancy platform and they can use, if there's a mules of in their company, they can use it on, on, on behind the scenes. And, and if you already have the subscription, you don't have to pay anything for it. So it's just like that. <laughs> sort of a, a couple of hundred thousand people descending on, on San Fran um over the over the course of the week so any agendas anyone anyone has probably will instantly go out the window in the madness that, that ensues um and obviously all the events going on in and around sort of the moscone center as well including as we said sort of the food fighters and, and things like that um and i think from from my side what i've always seen at dreamforce and world tour and, and connect is the mule soft community in itself is always very present uh, I, I think you, you know, I mean, obviously, Adam will be there from from Shy, but, but you see people from all over the world that you've you've been speaking to, or you know, get with on LinkedIn, or have been on virtual meetups with, or, or things like that. That are then all in the same place. Um, you know, I know um, I'm I'm going out for for lunch with with Joey Joey Chan on Wednesday. He's just landed in New York today. He's actually in our office on Thursday doing the Salesforce user group, and he's doing hyper automate hyper automation for them. On Thursday, I think he's also speaking at Dreamforce. Um, but yeah, he's just landed, so I'm meeting up with him, and I, he's he's excited. He he wanted to join us tonight, but has literally landed a few hours ago, um, so he wasn't able to. I think slightly jet lagged. Um, but yeah, look, really looking forward to seeing everybody there. Really appreciate the time you spent with us sort of this evening, and I, I think the community growth that we get from this, and you know, the the week in, in San Fran is huge. So many people realise what. MuleSoft actually is what they could do with it, what they, you know, what a business can accomplish with it. You know, I think we've seen a number of other, you know, Apex developers or Salesforce developers, you know, admins pick up more of MuleSoft and that side. And, you know, in, with, with Tableau as, as well, like, like you said, you know, pe people that could advance their skill sets um, and really get sort of enlightened and, and their eyes open by, by what's there over the course of the week. And, you know, I, I think things like, like this leading up to it, and obviously I'm sure having anyone that watches this is probably going to be trying to grab you guys there to learn from you as, as well and having access to, to that sort of experience. So, 
yeah, expect if you have got any free time, it will be taken up very quickly. Um, we have got an escape. If anybody wants an escape, uh, we, we've got a, a coffee shop booked on, on Wednesday and Thursday, about five minutes away from Moscone. Uh, so anybody that wants to escape can run out for a second. We've got free coffee and recharge station for phones and stuff there. Uh, if you do need to escape the madness. Um, exactly what Nisha says. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you will be walking around a lot. Definitely. Um, the weather is incredibly unpredictable. I think last year, uh, I think it was, uh, well, from, from my side, well, probably Fahrenheit-wise, probably 90, early 90s, I think 30 degrees Celsius, Adam. I think we were we were sat in the sun for a bit and it was far too hot and not expected, um, but quite unpredictable in San Fran, as I understand. Um, but yeah, guys, look, that's that's it from, from me. Unless anybody has anything else they want to mention before we go, anybody else wants to plug anything, please feel free. Jonathan, I'll, I'll, I'd i like one one quick thing. Uh, actually, I've got two things. So the first thing is one of the one of the things that the, that uh, Salesforce did this year is they they limited the number of of uh, sessions. Um, and instead of having instead of opening it up and having having, let's say, let's say, let's say a thousand different people um, with with a, a thousand different sessions, what they did is they actually they said, okay, well, actually we want to, we're going to have 500 and then we're going to have those 500 present twice, right? Because there were a lot of people that were, you know, over the past, you know, last year and, and years before they, you know, try to go to somebody's session, but it was at the same time as another one that they wanted to attend. So I think they've tried to spread it out a little bit more um, with that. Uh, so, you know, a few of us didn't, maybe didn't get sessions picked. I, I had a couple entries uh, that didn't get selected. Um, uh, but, but, you know, I think one of the things is it gives you another opportunity to see somebody else uh, a second time. I think the other thing um, that I was, the, the second thing I was going to bring up, I just, it would be, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up when, when you talk about community, all of the community leaders, uh, you know, Sabrina and, uh, you know, Sabrina Marshall and, 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 and um, Mariana and all of these other, you know, the, the people that I, really kind of consider the 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 glue that ties all of us together because they are right now working their tails off to make this an excellent event for all of us community folks and and you know and and they're by, they end up behind the scenes right so you know we end up with the posts we end up with the with the the you know the the sound bites and all of this stuff but let me tell you it, it doesn't happen at all without the Sabrinas and the Isabellas and, uh, you know, and, and Mariana and everybody else. I mean, they are absolutely so critical uh, to the community at these events like Greenforce. So huge shout out to all of them. If any of them are listening, that's all I had to say. So. Couldn't support you enough in that jam. They were, they were amazing and uh, we couldn't do it without them. Looking forward to seeing everyone. Yeah, no, absolutely, Jim. Completely agree with you there. Like, I think the when, when me and Adam first sort of launched the, the podcast, the first episode we wanted to do was with um, Sabrina Hockett. Um, and we did it purely you know, wholly. We she just wanted to speak about the power of, of the community and, and that side. And we thought it was a perfect way to launch, obviously, what, what we were doing there with that. Um, you know, and again, Nisha, like, like, like you said, you know, someone like Sabrina who came in from a completely different background that has just really sort of evangelized what gets put forward, really sort of built everything out. And, you know, we we reap all the benefits of that, uh, you know, bringing people in, you know, getting the, the meetups out there, getting the events out there, everything that we're going to have access to over the week at San Francisco is all led by that side. Um, and like I said, we, we don't see what they're doing right now for what's going to happen when we're there. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Completely agree.